Howdy folks. Welcome back to Hudson Valley Prepping and Survival. Today, we're out here in the Hudson Valley, surviving. I got a couple uh, pieces of gear I wanna show off to you guys today, but I'm not sure where I'm gonna put it just yet. But I do love this little meandering stream behind me here, so. I gotta pick a spot. Uh, I need some trees. Could use some flat ground. And um, stick with me. Let's see what we can come up with here. Hot some valley prepping and survival. Now, I have some requirements. One is a good couple live trees. Uh, the next requirement is that these trees be oh, about 13 feet apart, 12 to 13 feet apart, um, and on some flat ground. Now, I'm having some issue with the flat ground right now, so we may have to uh, ford this stream and head on over to the other side. Not really a big deal. Um, but uh, I'm not seeing what I'm looking for on this shore, so we're going to have to head across and see if we can find something a little better, shall we? Let's go. It's a nice little flat rock right there. Flat rock there. And over we go. Well, these two trees right here, these aren't bad. Ideal? No. Dead? No. But here's the problem with these two trees. We got big, scary Widowmaker hanging right over top of us. Nah. Nah. Nope. Can't do it. Can't do it. So, we'll have to move down here a little bit. Now these guys right here, these two, this guy, and this guy, those are rather ideal. Um, yeah, I like it, I dig it, it's flat. It's gonna work for us, we're right next to the water, which is really cool. So, I gotta get to work. You guys stick with me. I got some cool stuff to show you guys today. I've had this gear for, um, a year and a half I say almost two years some of it um, and I feel now that I've used it for a length of time I uh, can offer my opinion on a review a lot of folks get a piece of gear um, they bust it out immediately and they're like let's do a review bro you didn't even use it yet you didn't even use it yet so I like to season my gear I guess we'll call it and make sure it's gonna work. I don't like to do those um, reviews right out of the box, so stick with me, let's get it going. First things first, I gotta get this massive freaking pack off. Let's do that. Then we can do it one-handed, nice and gentle-like. Now, I'm being super gentle with my pack because uh, there's some breakables in there today. And uh, I'm gonna show you guys that here in just a little bit. But for now, we're gonna clean up the ground here a little bit, move some of these sticks out of the way. I am not going to clean up the leaves just yet. Um, as you guys can tell, it's like the end of January. Um, it's 39 degrees here right now, and everything's a little mushy and muddy. So I'm gonna leave these leaves down here to protect my feet a little bit and maybe not turn this into a total mud pit. Um, hopefully if you guys are using this same setup, you can kind of take this approach if you're out in the woods this time of year dealing with this crap. So uh, stick with me, I'll be right back. Let's start digging in here. We got ourselves a Jetboil Minimo. Set that guy down here. Get 
some gas for the mow. Jet power fuel. Oh, pillow. I need a pillow. Oh, the light kit. All right, gonna need that. That's uh, batteries and lights and stuff. And then we got all our gear in here. You guys ready for uh, one Tigris extravaganza? Let's do it. All right, guys, this is the piece of love resistance. This is what I want to bring to you guys here today. Um, this is the one Tigris Tigman hot tent. Now, they call this a hammock hot tent, but I think it's a hammock hot tent and so much more. Um, this thing's incredible. I've been using it for, like I said, a couple of years now. Um, rain, wind. Um, haven't been out in the snow yet, but they're calling for some tonight, so... Let's see how this sucker holds up, shall we? Um, again, this is a hot tent. Um, I just pulled it out of my pack. We'll, uh, we'll go through the specs and uh, I'll let you guys know what this thing's really all about here in just a second. Stick with me. Now, if you decide to purchase one of these One Tigris Tigman hot tents, no affiliation with them, by the way, um, this is all out of pocket. Looking at you, One Tigris. Um, this tent comes with all of the stakes that you're going to need, all of the cordage that you're going to need to set it up properly. Now, there is some additional gear that you could buy with this tent, specifically the, um, the tent poles that One Tigris makes. It does have uh, some spots where you could use those. So if you're interested in one of these, it might be something that you want to look into those tent poles. Um, they can make this a little easier to set up if you're in an area where perhaps you don't have so many trees and you're not going to use this as a hammock hot tent because that's kind of how it's sold as a, a hammock hot tent. And uh, I think it's great. I think it works for a hammock hot tent perfectly but i think it can be so much more than just a hammock hot tent stick with me and i'm going to show you all about it now the ridge of this tent on the ends comes with these nice buckled straps so they help you put tension on this sucker it's a pretty big tent i gotta be honest um and they help you put tension on it so what i typically do is i tie a loop around each end of this with cordage and then i'll tension it down with these straps that are built right into it stick with me i'll show you that all right we got the uh, humble beginnings here i've got my loop tied up to the tree here i've got my strap right here well i got it pulled pretty tight already oh, try to pull some more tension on this guys but i don't i don't think i need it this guy's pretty taut here pull her up and... yeah this one-handed camera operation and setting up the tent wow what a pain in the neck and boom tension look at that so if she loosens up at all you still got some uh, adjustability right here in these straps the ridge is now just taller than my head that's kind of the goal here um, now let's get to a little bit more of this setup there's not really a whole lot more to it guys um, you see all the guy ropes we have here these are the ones that come with them one tigress reflective all tied to bungees and we're gonna pull this sucker out start staking it up get it on a crack a lacking one tigress tigman hot tent stick with me so like i said before all of these one tigress tents come with these nice ultralight aluminum tent stakes um, there's no super wind in the forecast tonight, so I'm going to go ahead and use these little guys to put the tent out. I typically like a, a big tent stake, man, like big heavy duty, something you can really drive into the ground, especially this time of year because the ground's so soft right now. There's that squishy layer, and uh, when you get some decent winds, 
you can get a little hairy. It'll pull these suckers right out of the ground. Um, definitely experienced that a couple weeks ago while hammock camping. Um, my good buddy Ed, the militant farmer, he lost one of his tent stakes, man. Flew right over the tarp and landed on the other side. We, uh, we spent actually quite a while looking for it. And um, yeah, I didn't think it would eject it quite that far, but you never can be too careful. So get yourself some big ass tent stakes, especially if you're going soft ground or uh, windy conditions. You want really good tent stakes, guys. So I'm going to set the camera down and start staking this sucker out. Hang with me. Let's see if this works out. Well, that worked for a minute. Sorry about the drop. So, she's taking shape here. Definitely taking shape. Um, ridge has lowered considerably. Now, all of these guys are on bungees. Some give in this thing, some flex. And what I like to do with it, because I don't have tent poles, um, what I like to do is get it to about this point, and then I'll go find some sticks nice tall sticks pull these sides up and put a stick right underneath here it's gonna help me keep the shape of this bad boy while I'm in there messing around um, this thing does have snow skirts all the way around it um, I believe they're even on the doors let's go to the other side and check take a look inside first look inside the Tigman hot tent oh yeah we got snow skirts everywhere guys everywhere once these sides are pulled out there that cordage caught up caught up we didn't clean the ground quite good enough but i'm uh i gotta get this ridge up higher what do you think i think so yeah yeah we need another four or five inches guys let me hoist that up but uh you can see she's starting to take shape and uh it's pretty awesome it's not there yet once we get it up completely, that's when this thing gets really cool. Stick with me. Again, these uh, these buckles here, I'll move my line up the tree like I did on that side a little bit. Raise it up just a little and then tension. Oh, come on. Oh, it doesn't want a tension. It's too much tension, Mike. Yeah, this thing's pretty tight. I got the ridge up about where I think I'm going to want it. And if I need it a little bit higher, what I'll do is I can put another ridge line through here. There's tie outs all the way across for another ridge line to help suspend this guy a little bit better. Um, 
I love this freaking tent. It is absolutely awesome. All of the work that you guys saw me do with the um, the DD tarp, the big one, folding the corners in and everything, this sucker's got zippered doors on it. You don't need to do any of that, any of it. I mean, look at this thing. It's already closed up. It's a tent. For sure, it's a tent. No if, ands, or maybes. You look at that and say, nice tent, dude. Thing's awesome, absolutely awesome. And it gets cooler and cooler as the day goes on. Stick with me. All right, now I'm on stick patrol, guys. Get me some sticks. We gotta bust them down just the right size here. Pull them up there. Need one more stake over here. more stakes well sticks anyway stakes are done boom that's exactly what we're after this guy's way too big typically you do all this with your handsaw See what a difference those make? I mean, it's huge. Now it's supposed to have that prow front on it because again, this is a hammock hot tent. Not just any old hot tent. It's a hammock hot tent. Oh Lord. I think this video is probably gonna be the most fun you could have editing video. Yeah, this thing's coming along nicely, guys. Nicely. Look, at the, nature just keeps giving us these perfect prop sticks here. Perfect. And guys, if your stick is too short for here, you can run it down your guy lines, get some angle on it and make it the right height even if it doesn't fit in the corner you see you can make it work it doesn't have to be perfect they're just sticks it doesn't have to be perfect don't sweat it it's gonna work fine worst case scenario you got to go out there and uh reprop up a stick i mean nothing really big to worry about there all of these little branches Mother Nature has given us working flawlessly. Shorten that guy up. Pull this guy up. Couple of ammo. Look at this man. Taking shape like it's nobody's business. Woo! -hoo. The Hotel Day One Tigress is just about ready for occupants. We do a little bit more cleaning up in here though. Get some of this crap out of here. I mean, it's a hammock hot tent, right? You're gonna come in here and lay down. So, snow skirts, snow skirts. Look at that on the doors. And guys, there is doors. On both ends of this thing. So, I mean, it's all the way through, all the way through. It's huge, it's huge. The zippers are freaking amazing. Look at the cover they put on this so you can't get any drips from this guy down inside there. See that? They thought about this stuff and look at that, there's three, three zippers there. I'll show you what those are about here in just a second.
now that we're all open. Time to get to the meat and potatoes. I need something to drink, and um, then we'll get this on and cracking. Never can tell what's going to be going on out here when you're out here. The dump truck. That's our good buddy Jesse Muller right there. If you guys don't know, Mr. Muller's got a pretty kick-ass YouTube channel. Um, if you're fixing equipment, if you're building something, it's a place to go to right there. Jesse Muller. Fantastic YouTube channel, guys. Uh, shout out to Jesse Muller. Stop by, dropped us off a big load of gravel here today. Really appreciate it, brother. Couldn't do it without you. Thanks, Jesse. All right, so my downfall to um, this one tigress hammock, I really wish it had a way out on both sides. Now, it's only got a door on one side. Now, it does have these awesome bungee tie-outs to help keep your hammock spread open a little bit. Now, it has those on both sides. Um, I'll post the name to this hammock and all of the stuff about it. And I really wanted to try out their gear and see uh, how good it was. And I didn't realize I was going to become a one tigress junkie. Uh, one hit of that one tigress stuff and that's all it takes. And you will probably end up a one tigress camping junkie as well. Uh, the gear is pretty good quality. I haven't had anything from them that has leaked. Um, just fantastic quality, man. Uh, and the price point is right, especially if you're just getting into this stuff or are unsure. You don't want to invest too much money in this gear. Um, one Tigress, man, it's the way to go. Again, no affiliation, just my personal opinion on their stuff so far. Um, I've been really happy with all of their gear. And again, it didn't break the bank as far as budget was concerned. Um, my wood stove. That's what we're going to get to next. Now, my wood stove is not a One Tigress. Um, I went with a different company because I was looking for something that they didn't offer at the time. Now, at present, they may offer something similar, but I needed a little more out of my wood stove. Um, I didn't want to have to carry it in my free hand. I like to, uh, if I'm carrying anything, I want to carry extra water. So... I went with this one because it's going to give me a little bit more light in my space and uh, the price point was right on it. So the wood stove is from. So there's a couple pieces to this sucker. We have our uh, damper. Pipe. This is actually our chimney pipe right here. Uh, pretty colors, huh? Now, the old mutt taught me how to roll this thing. The Livingston man and myself, actually, after a lesson in the old mutt's driveway, we pulled it off flawlessly. And I'm going to see if the Livingston man can dig in the archives and uh, show you guys that process, initial process. Before you burn it in, you got to roll this guy just right so that it'll have its memory and return to the right shape when you need it. Um, so hopefully the Livingston man can stitch that bad boy in here. I, fingers crossed we still have it. We did it years ago when we first got this thing. Um, but it wasn't time for the review video yet. Now that I've used it, it's time, baby. It's time. So you've got your, your damper, your pipe, your spark arrester, all of your gaskets and um, uh, these are little rings that help hold everything together this this all bundles like so you have your little uh, your little wood stick so you can work in your stove and the stove is right here packs nice and flat this was in the bag guys this was in the bag so one thing about hot tent stoves is you need seasoned hardwood so coming out to the woods like this those standing dead trees, that's the ticket. Uh, anything green or softwood like pine and stuff like that, you really don't want to burn 
in your wood stoves, especially a hot tent wood stove like this. Um, it's going to create a lot of creosol and um, guys, this is just a roll of aluminum sheeting. Very thin. Uh, you can see all the black on there. I burned some decent hardwood, maple, ash, things like that, some oak, and uh, they still build creosol. That brings up another big point. When you're hot tent camping, you're always going to want to bring a carbon monoxide detector. Carbon monoxide is a heavy gas. It's going to sink. It's odorless. It's tasteless. You can't smell it. You won't even know it's there. You just don't wake up. So to avoid the don't wake up and avoid breaking the number one rule of survival, get yourself a carbon monoxide detector if you're going hot tent camping. Um, it's a great way to protect yourself and your loved ones when you're out there doing the thing. Get it. Get it. Don't. Go get one. Go get one. Then we can go hot tent camping. Without that, you're in trouble. Here she is, baby. You old stainless steel backpack and stove. Drawbacks. There's a few. It's very small. Now, that can be a plus or a minus with this thing. It's very small. See if we can get it apart. There's the lid for it. This whole sucker right here, you can see it's been used. Not heavily, but she's been used. All right, let's keep popping this guy out. Slowly, steadily, close the door. Now, if you purchase one of these things, it's gonna come with a set of gloves. The first thing that I would recommend you do is uh, take those gloves, throw them in the garbage and buy a better set. These are the little gloves that it comes with. They're better than nothing. They're very slippery on this stuff and um, not the best. So get yourself some good gloves, guys. I try to cram these on my hand here. I keep everything together because, you know, it all comes together. And this, uh, this little stove is almost completely together right now. Just one more piece under there. Now, after you burn these things, they move around a little bit. They can get a little wonky. You want to make sure all of these little slide locks on the side here, all these guys are put together really well. And then you got your feet here on the very bottom. They're pretty flimsy, so you got to be careful with that. Again, this thing is made to be lightweight, backpackable. This is the stainless steel version. I got it with glass on three sides. Now what I haven't done yet that I should do is cut some pieces of stainless steel sheet metal the same size as these guys on the side here in case one of these breaks in transit and I can stow them away with this thing it's so thin I wouldn't notice three stainless steel squares but if you get out there and you realize you busted this and this is your only source of heat you're gonna be in trouble so something to think about guys the glass is cool but it's not necessary. If this was all stainless steel, I might dent it, I might ding it up, I might even put a hole in it. But with a little bit of stainless steel repair tape or uh, something to that effect, you can be back up and running in no time. But here she is, guys. This is the Danchel Outdoors, uh, basically a shoebox stove, man. Tiny, 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 tiny. And uh, she packs pretty flat. I like this little thing. Now again, I think personally the biggest drawback to this stove is that it's so small. Um, when I finally get to sleep out here, I like to sleep. And with something this small, even if you put some good chunks of hardwood in there, you're going to be up every hour or two, maybe two and a half hours to reload this thing. Um, 
It's got a damper on the front. It's got a damper on the chimney. It's tough, man. It's tough. It, you shove a lot of wood in these things. It really burns up a lot of wood. Now, this is, again, lightweight backpacking type tent. Um, doesn't hold heat. Doesn't hold the heat. So you have to keep this thing going if you want to stay warm in this sucker. Um, you can't let it go out. But anytime you are going hot tent camping, I would highly recommend that whatever gear you bring, that you will do just fine even if you don't have this stove. Again, with the glass sides and things like that, these things can break, they can fail. Hell, it could uh, in catastrophic destruction the first time we fire it up, right? Then what do we do? We've packed you know, miles in and we're here now. If we don't have the gear that's gonna get us through without the wood stove, we're screwed. So always prepare to be without this thing, even if you have it with you guys. This is my favorite part. First thing I want to do is level up the bottom of this guy. We got to get it pretty level. We don't want it rocking and rolling. Um, again, it's a wood stove, man. Don't screw around with it. It'll burn your little house down. Even if your house is a portable one tigress hot tent shelter. Looks like we got that lined up pretty good. Now we're going to have to re-roll our pipe it's been a while since i've done this so uh this should be interesting or well its memory remain the same and just boop, boop, right out into its shape let's see you ready here it goes Again, these rings, as soon as you get this thing the size down here, put them all on, all of them, every one of them, all at the same time. We'll work those down as we work this pipe together. And I'm always going to leave one right by the end. Doing it, it's all like diagonal looking. We'll fix that once we get it into shape. Now, about every foot, 16, 18 inches or so, whenever you get to a good spot where it fits, and you want to leave one of those little rings that was on there. You don't want to take them all with you, but keep sliding them down as you're going, as you're getting it to the right size. The ring lets you know when it's the right size. There, we'll leave another ring there. Keep going down here. Rest that side. There we go. Another ring about there. We got two left. Now we still have our little uh, stainless steel clamps. That's going to lock this thing into the damper here. This guy's going to go inside the damper and we're going to clamp it down on this guy. Um, I kind of wish it was a better design. It's not the best. Danchel, I really hope you've improved on this over the last year and a half or so. Um, I'm pretty sure most of their stoves now no longer come with this type of pipe. They're all sectioned pieces of pipe. So it eliminates some of the issue, but hopefully, oop, almost lost this end. So now that we've got it kind of looking like a pipe, right? I mean, we're, we're almost there, it's looking like a pipe. We've got to get that seam in one straight line down the back. Now the same way we rolled it, we uh, unroll it until that seam is nice and straight like that. And boom, we got ourselves a chimney pipe, folks. So I'm going to uh, add this sucker right now before we do anything else and get her strapped on pretty good. This is a tie down to make sure that the wind doesn't take your pipe. It's extremely important to use this um, you do not want this hot pipe coming down on this hot tent. I, this stuff glows 
when you get it going. Um, it's thin, it's aluminum, it gets really hot. You could melt this tent just like that. So pay attention, follow all the instructions, guys. Don't, uh, don't skip any steps, please. I don't want to see you get hurt in your next hot tent experience or your first hot tent experience for that matter. All right, well, I think we'll uh, get this guy on here for sure. There we go, she functions, functions well. Let's send that out. Let's get our chimney cap on here. Two out of three ain't bad. There we go. We're looking all right. Ooh, should have put the band on first. Hey, when I do that, get ahead of yourself. You get excited. Then you're like, crap, man. Now I gotta work backwards. At least we're not going too far backwards. Cool, we're on there. Time to install this sucker. Let's go. All right, let's see if we can do this nice and easy like. I'll leave that right there. I'm gonna roll this thing up real good up here. Self-install, baby. Oh yeah! Look at that. We are just about in business, folks. Now, the design of this thing. Check it out. That's how it should work, in my opinion, anyways. Um, that thing should absolutely run inside of that, hands down. There is no reason it should um, run on the outside of it. Yet, this, uh, this little clip is supposed to go around there and hold that sucker in. Now, as you can see, the little damper is in the back now. So up and down is what we're after. That's gonna give us uh, open on that damper. That way is closed, All right? Up and down and closed. All right, let's get our guy lines hooked up outside. Fire this sucker up and get it warm in here, man. It's getting cold.
this is the one tigress extravaganza so yet another piece of uh one tigress gear that i spent some money on to uh let you guys know if it's worth it this is their i believe they call this a bushcraft mat um this sucker doubles as a chair hang on a second let me let me put you guys down here this uh self-filming shit is for the birds folks it's for the birds packs in here unbelievably well this thing is built like uh your toughest carhartt jacket and this waterproof undercoating this is gonna help keep my legs dry in this muddy mucky crap that we're dealing with here in the People's Republic of New Yorkistan here in late January. She looks a little more like a house now, doesn't she, folks? So I went ahead and uh, I took the hammock down because I want to show you guys how versatile this thing really is. It's, it's phenomenal, phenomenal. A million and one uses and counting. I keep coming up with different ways to use this sucker um it's a great tent it's pretty large so i broke down the hammock and i busted out a cot i mean that thing fits in there with plenty of room to spare um plenty of room to spare my gear is here i could easily put another cot here no problem um i don't think i could squeeze a third but you could easily do two people in here with gear um this would make a great like i don't know almost a little medical tent or something i mean at the events we gotta we gotta be prepared for stuff so um this is a great tent for all of those purposes and uh, you hang some lights in here, and at night, this thing is absolutely fabulous. And we got heat. We got heat. And uh, hey, I told you, carbon monoxide, and I brought a thermometer. Right now, we are sitting, uh, what is that, 53 degrees. 53 degrees, the wood stove just started getting going. The door is wide open. Let's shut the doors and... See how warm it gets. Just one load of wood. I'm not going to add any more wood. Uh, just what you guys saw me put in there, the Mickwick, and away it goes. Uh, we'll let that burn and see how warm it gets in here on one quick burn of wood. In the little uh, Danchel Outdoors stove. I might choke it down a little bit, um, but it's just getting going, man. Again, I went with the glass sides because I wanted some light in the tent. I wanted to do more than just heat the tent or heat my food. You know, there's enough surface up here to be able to put a pot on it. And then I have, I've, I've made a couple pots of coffee on this sucker in the past. So for now, I'm going to close up these doors right here. And it's just a simple little toggle. Holds them back. Pop these guys out. And this one out. Again, you know, this is kind of a late season kind of tent. So when you're uh, looking at these things and you're like, man, there's no screen, bro. The bugs, the bugs would eat me alive. Well, then you got to get yourself an inner tent. One of those little screen guys. Yeah, they make those for this. They sure do. Ooh, I feel like getting warmer in here already, man. Got a little darker in here already. These GoPros hate the dark. Um, but yeah, man, lots of room. Oh, it's nice, nice and warm right there. Woo! Woo! Nice and warm. Look at that sucker rip. Love it. Shoebox size, right? Not very big. Um, but again, man, no problem. You could fit two cots in here. Easy, easy, no problem. One here, one right there. Still have room for a table and your gear and be warm uh temperature is rising i'll tell you that right now uh, this says it went down a degree it says it's at 52 now but we're uh i'll tell you what if i hold it up there it'll it'll rip pretty quick um this little stove does great for this space again 
This is uh, backpacking. It's thin. It's lightweight. The sucker is not, it doesn't hold heat. It will contain it for the time being, but it, it seeps right out through the, the tent. It's not thick like a canvas wall tent or anything like that. Um, so you have to constantly keep this stove going, like constantly. The uh, experiences I've had with it, it was up all night feeding it or wake up to the the smell of creosote in this thing so bad that I could barely stand it. And I think that's more of a flaw in the uh, the pipe and that design around that collar on the stove there. Again, this isn't one of the top tier bad man pajamas. This is just stainless steel uh, backpacking stove off of Amazon. Um, no affiliation with these guys. No affiliation with One Tigress, although I do really like their stuff. And if you want to send me something, I would be more than happy to beat the crap out of it and tell people what it's worth. Um, so far, all of their gear has been nothing but a thumbs up for me, man. Um, this One Tigress uh, cot, phenomenal. Little, little bit of a high price tag on the cots they're uh they're pretty pricey on the website i actually got these used off a of facebook marketplace from a guy locally and uh he used them didn't need them anymore they were taking up space and he said hey man if you can use them awesome so thanks so much facebook marketplace guy um up to 54 degrees here down at the bed level right no carbon monoxide we'll put this keep it close we'll keep it close to the stove wait if anything gets crazy um, man, this, this is a home run. This tent is not very expensive. Um, and if you already have a hammock, it'll work with that too because it's got the three zipper system. So you just adjust your top zippers, run your thing through here. I'll show you. See the extra zippers up there? So what you do is you find where your line is. You go like that and you run your little hammock strap through. See how I got them bungeed together? And if you sling down, it'll go down. If you sling up, it'll go up. Look at that. And a little bit of ventilation. Wow. I gotta tell you, it's freaking hot up here. Like, like really freaking hot up here. Well, I need a fan. That's what I need. Need one of those little uh, thermal fans right there. Oh, look. That's a drawback to them. They don't seal up very well. So you see that drip? That's, uh... That's Mickwick juice. Those things are great. I love those fire starters. Thank you, Mickwick. Thank you. And the hat. I love this hat. Um, but it's getting a little. It's getting really warm in here, guys. I got to 54. It says now, but um, let's give it a few minutes. I'm gonna grab my uh, my bag here, dig in, maybe set some lights up in this sucker. Get ready for dark. It's always creeping on you, so pair ahead of time folks yeah maybe i'll set up some lights and uh and see what we're looking like stick with me up to 56 down here right now uh just check the temperature outside we're 41 degrees i just started to close the damper on this thing just a little bit it was screaming roaring roaring and i figure i'd give it a we'll burn this wood slowly try and make it last a little bit yeah, gotta make it last a little bit. But meantime, I'm gonna try out some of this uh, Peak Refuel Mountain Berry Lemonade Re-Energizing Hydration Blend. Uh, I've never tried this one before, so I'm excited to. Yeah, let's give her a go. What's it say? What do you add it to? Water, obviously. Pour contents of one stick into 10 to 16 ounces of water. Shake well until dissolved cool cool if you have one of the newer grails like um, the geo press or the ultra press and uh, you have the new filters in it you can actually dump these suckers right in there as long as you have that you know one-way backflow preventer stubbed in there you can do it man you can do it all right let's try one of these out in the very short time it took me to dump a package of that uh, mountain berry lemonade into this we're uh, we're almost up to 60 degrees 
the little stove is just smashing it, smashing it. Um, I would say we are probably, I don't know, 15 minutes into this burn. Um, maybe, well, since the real burn, I, I lit the Mickwick probably about 20 minutes ago. So let's see how long this wood lasts, man. Uh, we'll just let it burn out as if we fell asleep and uh, we'll see how long, how long is this sucker gonna last for us. Um, I got like two good pieces of dry hardwood left right there. This is all packed with this red oak. Um, shout out to the Livingston man. Thank you so much, bro, for the, the dry hardwood. It's like the perfect length to go in this thing. Um, couldn't ask for better. Thanks, brother. Oh, God, it's hot in here. Yep. Yep. Yep, it's time. Start taking off the layers, man. It's getting freaking hot in here. 62. Says our little uh, thermometer right there at the head of the bed, man. Uh, 62 degrees in your face. This little tiny wood stove. This thing is ripping. Ripping. Loving it. Loving it. And it's dampered down a good bit. I mean, phew, couldn't imagine it with it all the way open. It's freaking balmy in here. Like, like. Oh, man. Have me some on point adventure snacks. These things are awesome. These are uh, the freeze dried lemon heads. Mmm. Mmm. Man. Oh, look at this thing go. Like an inferno, man. Good golly. I'm gonna have to close that damper a little bit. We're gonna burn all our wood up. Wow. Glass is awesome. The red oak is some of the pound for pound best firewood that you can get. Um, I actually, I don't think there is a better firewood than red oak. Um, best stuff around good at it if you can look at it go incredible look at this 60 63 just clock 63 i mean plenty of room bring a friend bring at least one friend right yeah if you're if you're in here in the hammock honestly it's a little cramped um you know you've got one side or the other uh you put a, a cot in here put two cots in here now you're in business. Or perhaps you have one of those uh, one tigress bug tents, right? The ones that set up with the with the pole inside. You could set that thing up in here, no problem. No problem. Man. It's like really freaking nice in here. One of my worries with this tent is the ash. Now there's a spark arrestor on it, but I do worry about it. I worry that that crap's going to burn a hole in the sucker. And it's bound to happen. It's going to happen sooner or later, right? You never get away with everything scot-free, but... If you use them in foul weather and they're wet, lessens the chance you're going to burn a hole in it. Um, I'm waiting for the wet. It'll be here later. I hope I don't burn a hole in it before... Uh, before the rains come, folks. Wow, it's hot in here. Like, really hot in here. Unbelievable. This thing is home run. Home run. I mean, to get into um, to a hot tent for under 200 bucks, that's a win. I think my backpacking stove I spent a little extra on it with all the glass and stuff. 200 bucks. You could be in the backpack hot tent camping for, oh, under $400. I think that's a win. This stove, incredible. Just incredible. 64 degrees. It's rising like crazy. 
can't shut the damper anymore. I might have to uh, neck it down a little at the back of the stove. So I would say that that's uh, one drawback to this little sucker is having to deal with these things on the back of the stove, right? I found that I just uh, cheated a little bit. See that? <laughs> and that'll cut some of the exhaust going out, keep some of the heat in. Again, we're trying to, oh, that's a good roll, huh? How about that? Thanks, Mickwick Fire Starters. You rock. Loving this, man. This is such a great setup. Mm mm mm. Well, I'm digging this so much, I think I might. Should we stay out here for a snowstorm? What do you think? Yeah, I'm supposed to get like five to eight inches tonight. Hmm. I'll check with the boss, see if it's okay. Maybe she'll let me spend the night in the woods tonight. There's mosquitoes flying in here. It's the end of January. And I have just hatched mosquitoes inside of the hot tent. Yep. 66. 66 degrees already. Um, fantastic. Oh, check it out. These one tiger's cot come with molly webbing on the side here so you can clip your gear right to it. Nice little storage pocket here and that's on both sides so you get two of them out of these one tigress cots. Now you can also set this thing up at two different heights. These legs right here, these come off and you can set this sucker much much lower to the ground so if you feel like you're too tall, don't put the legs on it. Fabulous, right? I thought so. Now, like I said, the one Tigress one's a little bit pricey. You can find some knockoffs just like this um, for much, much less. Now, uh, the quality of these, pretty good, man. I, uh, they're stiff. That's one thing I'm going to say about them is they're really stiff. Ah, they don't have the give that I thought that they would and even after using them for a couple of nights they still don't feel broken in they're very very rigid so if you've got a little cushion or uh, maybe an inflatable camp mat not a bad idea to chuck that sucker on top of this thing and give yourself a little bit more cushion man these things uh, they're pretty quality but they're they're pretty freaking rigid um, now they tension into place, so that's a plus. Um, I like them. I like them a lot. Wow, almost time to get rid of the long sleeve shirt. I gotta tell you guys, I, I didn't think it was gonna get this warm in here this fast. This is pretty good, 67 degrees. Um, the red oak is rolling. The glass is gonna look like crap because we got it dampered down so much. Um, but no, uh, you know, other than smelling hot stainless steel, there's no smell off of the stove. Uh, we burned it in outside a long time ago. Me and the Livingston man did this thing uh, a solid when we set it up. We set it up initially the first time the right way. I did everything by the book, um, including rolling that pipe. And um, when we got everything set up, we burned it in. And when I unrolled the pipe i was you know you guys saw how it went together it was, it was pretty flawless man that thing that initial memory when you burn that pipe in is everything it's everything man I really this is this was so worth the money this could be a medical tent this could be a a, a triage area um you could open both ends and just uh have a party pass through you know Set up the table, hand out drinks, turn it into the, the bar area. I mean, you could do almost anything with this tent. The walls on the side are short. You know, that's that's about the max of it right there. Shoulder height for me on the cot. 
And uh, if I was sleeping here, I would totally pull this guy off the wall a little bit. You don't want to be in contact with your walls. That's how you draw condensation through one of these things. Um, or liquids from the outside. But it's got a really good waterproof coating on it. Um, I've never had it leak. I've slept in this in the hammock. I've slept in this in the cots. Um, extremely versatile. Look at this. 60 freaking 9 degrees in here at the head of the bed no carbon monoxide on the kitty carbon monoxide detector we're looking good man we're looking good wow well tell you what if i'm thinking about staying here i'm gonna have to think about going to cut some more firewood so well I'll check back with you guys in a little bit. I'm not, I can't leave the tent yet. We got to see how long this wood's going to go for. Uh, and I got nothing but time on my hands. Shoes. I should have brought some cards or something. Maybe I could have played solitaire. Well, I'll be back. Seventy-three degrees. Stove still burning great. I've eaten just about all my snacks. I'm gonna have to hit up Sabrina at On Point Adventure Foods. Get me some more snacks, man. Those things are so freaking good. I actually brought one of her uh, entrees with me for this evening. I wasn't sure how long I was gonna be out here. I wasn't, you know. I didn't really have any plan. I just kind of threw everything in the truck and said, me, I want to go set up the hot tent. Finally film a review video on this thing. I love this sucker, man. This thing's just great. Look at, look at how roomy it is. You got the O-light up there and the, the ridge, the O-lantern. The gear is over there. I could easily, easily put another hammock, or not a hammock, but another cot. Same exact size as this one. Um right over there against the back door and then we could just use the the one door next to the stove i mean she's burning down but she isn't burned out that's for sure and um 73 degrees man 73 degrees we'll open this vent a little bit give it a little more air Let's see just how warm we can get it we didn't want to kill it all right away but you know keep us nice and toasty see how long she burns um we're 40 plus minutes in 73 degrees in here um once the temperature starts to drop i'm gonna say that it's time to load the stove and that's gonna be our time mark um to check the time 337 about 40 minutes in 45 minutes um and again, it wasn't packed very tight. This was an initial light, so the next packing you could do a good bit tighter, especially if you got, you know, good coals like that. You can really beat them down and pack some wood on top of there. I see the sides darken up when you damper it down. So if you, you're gonna damper a stove, is the glass overkill? Yeah, yeah, it's overkill. Um, it's definitely not needed, but it does help throw heat, so. I figured with this stove being as small as it is, I needed every bit of, you know, heat throwing I could get out of it. Because it's, well, let's face it, it's it's like a freaking shoebox, man. It really is a, a shoebox stove. Um, most of my boots come in bigger boxes than this thing. Just saying, just saying. 
But I love the fact that I can get up and I can walk around in here. I'm not, you know, my head just touches the ridge and I, I could probably pull it up a little bit more, but it's kind of where it's supposed to be. The ends will get at six foot. You get a little bit of sag to the middle unless you run a ridge line and then really tie this guy up. Um, again, both ends have that uh, prow to them. So the ridge at the very top here is much further out than the bottom is. You can see the bow in this here. I mean, if we go all the way back, you can't even see anything, but they, uh, they bow in. Because again, this is a hammock hot tent. Is it though? Is it? I mean, I don't know. I, you could get uh, two people in here easy. Two cots, no problem. Uh, your gear, obviously you'd have to uh, be a little bit more manageable with your gear. You can't, you know, let your bag throw up all over the, the compound here, Mike. Sorry. Um, is what it is, but I'm here by myself, so I got I got room to spread my legs. I can spread my legs. Um, you could totally set a chair up in here, no problem, no problem, no problem. The uh, the cot's nice, nice place to sit. Again, the ground is uh, well, it's gross, it's muddy, it's wet. Weird January. Winter's been really weird lately. But work with what you got. Um, I have set this up in the past on ground just like this and what I'll do is I'll bring a couple of uh, small tarps with me and lay them out you know under where my feet are gonna be so that I'm not constantly making mud and uh, destroying the ground underneath me um, they help they're a little slippery time to time but it's a good way to um, insulate yourself from that mud and that crap on the ground again small tarp pieces because you do not want to put a tarp anywhere underneath or near the opening of this bad mamma jam As a matter of fact all these leaves i got here that's a big no-no as well you gotta clear you gotta clear all that crap out of there mike i can hear you guys in the comment section right now yelling at me bro you gotta burn your dead down bro yeah well we're all learning together aren't we see there's the there's the, the mickwick magic right there oh i'm okay with it i'm all right with it i don't mind hopefully someday it'll have a whole rainbow of mickwick colors here on the legs yeah i don't mind at all beauty marks the last thing you want is your freaking hot tent to catch on fire um and honestly carbon monoxide and fire are your two biggest concerns when it comes to hot tent camping and i want you folks out there to take it seriously um bring a small fire extinguisher with you if you have one um, otherwise keep some extra water maybe a spray bottle handy in case you forget to move your leaves and all of a sudden the ground's kind of smoldering in your tent you know I have to put that out um, model of that story folks is be prepared be prepared if you're coming out and you're bringing a fire inside your sleeping area it's nothing to screw around with um, and again your gear that you bring should be able to sustain you even if this sucker right here isn't working so i know i got all my cold weather gear with me and i would rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it because that's how we do things around here oh snap guys the temperature is dropping we are down to uh 72 72 degrees so I would say at this point, it's you would have to reload that sucker. I mean, there's some there's some room in there. Let's uh, let's take a peek inside, shall we? This tool is invaluable. Oh yeah, it's burned down really good. Lots of coal. See, that's how you set your tent on fire right there. Lots of coals in there. I would say that you would have to load that thing right now. Um, about an hour about an hour so I am gonna load 
my last two really good pieces of hardwood in there. There's one. And again, this thing's really small, so loading wood is not uh, always the easiest thing to do. And uh, don't be touching that door, son. You'll burn your digits off. See, I got pretty good at using this little tool that they gave me. A million and one uses and counting. Thanks, Danchel Outdoors. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'd love to do more hot tent videos. If you guys know of a hot tent that you want to see reviewed, or maybe a stove that you want to see us review, um, we would be happy to beat the crap out of it and tell you what we think about it. So uh, don't be afraid to leave something down in the comments section. We really appreciate it. Uh, overall, I think the One Tigris Tigman hot tent is a total win for anybody who's looking to get into hot tenting. Um, it's absolutely fabulous. It's You see it, it's multiple use. It, this, you, not just for hammocks, I, I promise you that. And uh, you could probably accommodate a little bigger stove than what I've got here, but I I don't know how much bigger you wanna go, man. It was 73, uh, it's down to 71 in the time it took us to load it. Um, temperature's dropping outside, so We'll see, it was 41 degrees outside and it's 70. It's been five minutes since the GoPro overheated and turned itself off. We are down to 69 degrees. Like I said, it doesn't hold heat very well. It's even getting um, cooler up here in the ridge. It just flows through it, man. There's no real insulation to this thing at all it's thin it's made to be lightweight it's made to pack in um, it's meant to keep your stove hot so hopefully the last session that I did um, saved because it just kind of killed it right in the middle of it um, but I'll reiterate now that uh, I think this one Tigris Tigman hot tent is a win because uh, it's so much more than just a hammock hot tent you can you can throw a couple cots in here you can bring the dog um, there's room there's a lot of room in this thing uh, fantastic price point again doesn't hold heat very well um, but it does hold the heat while you're making it so uh, something to keep in mind when you're looking at purchasing one of these is um, the size of the stove you're gonna use again this little shoebox stove Gets it really hot in here, but you got to keep loading the thing. So there's a trade-off there. And uh, weigh your pros and cons, guys. You know? And go with what's going to work best for you and your situation. Because this works great for me, but this might not work so hot for you. But I'm going to continue to hang out, burn the rest of my firewood. We got to load it back up again. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's just about dinner time for me. Some on-point adventure meals. This is a vegetable beef mashed potato bowl. Really looking forward to it. Uh, Sabrina, thanks for the great stuff, man. Love this stuff. Love this stuff. Much lower in sodium than all the store-bought stuff. This is it's a little more homemade. Uh, on-point adventure foods. Check them out, guys. Again. No affiliation, no money transferring hands, just sending you guys to something good. The old jet boil here, we're going to fire this bad boy up and get us cooking. Again, no carbon monoxide. Do not ever, 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 ever break the number one rule of survival. Especially not while camping or hot tenting or anything. Don't break the number one rule of survival. Don't die. Hudson Valley Prepping and Survival.
10 minutes. 10 minutes. Vegetable beef, mashed potato bowl, beef, mashed potatoes, carrots, peas, corn, beef broth, tomato paste, garlic, onion, Worcestershire. Is that how it's said? Worcestershire. Pepper, oregano, flour. Just as easy as that. I started with a three quarter cup of water and found that what I really wanted was about a cup of water. Um, so it says between a half a cup to one cup. Um, but it does instruct you to slowly add your boiling water to achieve the desired consistency. Some folks like lumpy potatoes, some folks like smooth potatoes. I get it. It's so freaking hot in here, this GoPro has melted down twice. Brandy new. Hero 12, they say. Get the good one. Yeah. Well, it's still 67 degrees in here. And uh, the second burn is on still. A few more minutes for that on point adventure meals. If the GoPro even saved that. But I'm doing it. Doing it. Doing it. Vegetable, beef, mashed potato bowl, baby. I got some time to kill. Even if I can't stay here tonight, I have to uh, I gotta burn the stove out and clean all this stuff up, right? Yeah, well, stick with me. I'll be back. I need that mashed potato bowl for sure. Can't wait to eat this freeze-dried food, man. I, I really can't. It's still 68 degrees in here. It's so comfortable. Again, the... Uh, Let's check our outside temperature, shall we? The Weather Channel says it is 41 degrees. Yeah, 41 degrees. Yeah, so can't beat it. 68 in here, 41 outside. Love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah, really looking forward to this. You know, splitting wood, chopping wood, setting up a, a big, giant, freaking hot tent, man. Build up an appetite. Gotta eat. Gotta eat. Man needs nourishment. So. I'm gonna dive into this uh, on point adventure meal here. Mmm. Oh, it smells so good. Mmm. Cause it is so good. Man. A little bit of Wi-Fi out here. Yeah. Bring the jackery, some solar panels. This doghouse stuff ain't looking too bad. Mmm. Ha ha! Yeah. Always king of the castle. You bring your castle anywhere you want to go. Mmm. This is that. Stick to your ribs. All some goodness right here. Mmm. 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 Yeah. Put couch over there. I wonder if one tigress makes an inflatable couch. kitchen area. I'm going to need more firewood. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, I'm not joking. I, no, I really do want you to bring a whole cord of seasoned firewood to the woods. I, I know it's the woods, but I need seasoned firewood. I need short pieces, like 14 inch lengths. Like a whole cord, bro. Can you do it? I know it's gonna snow tomorrow, that's why I gotta get it here today. I gotta stack it up inside my my hot tent, bro. Gotta get ready for the storm. Oh, okay, okay. All right, I'll see you in a little while. Yes. Bite over some friends. Have a housewarming party. This place is lit. Mm. Yeah, I need I need totally need you to overnight me more of this on point adventure foods, man. I'm gonna be out here. I I might stay here forever, so yeah, the, the more you can send the bread. Thank you.
thank you. Okay, goodbye. Well, folks, thank you for joining us on this video today. Really appreciate it. Uh, do us a favor, smash that like button. Leave a comment down below in the comment section. Really helps out the channel. And uh, consider hitting that subscribe button, guys, especially if you're new here. We'd really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit that bell icon. Hudson Valley Prepping Survival. We are there!